Hi, and welcome to Wrenching Up, where we tackle the projects and demonstrate the procedures that you, our customers, ask us to do. We've got two great projects for you today. We're going to show you how to check the 12-volt battery and the charging system on a vehicle that has no alternator and no voltage regulator. And we're also going to go over the six steps to successful TPMS programming, so let's get started. My customers are seeing a lot of TPMS problems now. Isn't there some kind of system for dealing with them? Those are great questions, Eddie, and to help us with that today is Steve Donaldson from Bartech. How you doing, Steve? Good, Jim. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Thanks for being here. You betcha. Wow, tell us about these tools. Well, we've got a lot of exciting tools here, Jim. Uh, the first step in successful TPMS is to have a complete diagnostic and relearn tool. So with our Tech 500 or our Tech 400 SD, we've got that built into these tools. We have full capabilities of doing relearns, plus diagnostics. We can actually re, uh, read DTCs out of the vehicle through the OBD2 cable on compatible vehicles, um, and we can actually clear those codes as well as we go forward. You got two tools here, so do you get to use either one you want, or is one good for a specific job? Both of these tools, actually the functions they perform at the vehicle are exactly the same. What we've built into the 500 is wireless features. We've got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities in this tool. Also, it's an inductive charging, so it can sit on the charger so the tool is ready to go 100% of the time when the technician gets ready to use it. What we've got built into these tools is our process-driven menu flow. So what it does is it follows the car as it comes into the shop with our test before you touch, our ability to, to program or clone sensors, and then to do the relearn of the vehicle. So it's a complete process and that's all built into the flow of our menu. So it, it's easy for anybody to pick it up and go. We also have what we call our front counter tool, our Tech 200. And this is designed for the front counter guy to have in his pocket. He can go out when he's getting the tire sizes off and do our test before you touch right up front. Well, these are the electrical tools and these are the mechanical tools, right? There's two parts to the TPMS sensor. One is the electronics which transmit the data to the, to the vehicle, and the other one is the hard parts that, that fasten the unit to the wheel itself. So we've got a complete mechanical tool set available as well. Torque wrench for the, the nut, we've got torque wrenches for the uh, valve core itself. A lot of people don't realize there is torque to a valve core, uh, uh, so that's, that's one good thing. We also have all the other torque wrenches available uh, for the snap-in sensors. We've got the T10 torque tool. Here, uh, we've got the Baru torque tool um, as well in here, and these are all preset torques. They're all breakaway, so when I'm done, they're, they, they break off, so there's no over torquing on any of these items as well. Uh, grommet removal and installation tool in here as well, too, as, long, as well as a good digital tire gauge. How the system is set up is that if the pressure drops below 25% of what's placard here, then that will trip our light on, on the particular vehicle. Now we do have two types of lights that we can have. We can have a solid light, which indicates a pressure issue, or we can have a flashing light, which indicates a system issue. That's actually a malfunction indicator light when it's flashing. That could be as simple as a bad sensor. These sensors do have batteries in them that last about 100,000 miles. Um, or it could be uh, code stored in the computer. Uh, so we could have a computer issue as well. So the second thing that we would need to do would be to check and see if we have any of those lights on in the dash of this vehicle. And in this case we do. We have a solid light, tire pressure monitoring light, which indicates uh, low pressure, and we have the mill light on as well. This particular vehicle, too, actually tells us exactly what location that pressure is at, correct Jim? That is right. The driver yeah. information panel says it's the right front tire and it's at uh, 24 PSI. Okay, that's great information to have there, but we don't know if this vehicle has ever been taken to a shop, had the tires rotated, and whether that position is actually correct or not. So one thing about our tool, when we go around, we'll actually verify those pressures and we'll be able to determine if that is exactly the, the tire that's actually low, or if it's a different tire and it has never been relearned after the tires have been rotated. So we do need to determine what year the vehicle is, and we recommend getting it off the VIN number by using the 10th digit of the VIN number. This is a D, which tells me that it's a 2013 Chevrolet Malibu, so I can set my tool up accordingly. But what we want to do first is do a visual inspection on this valve stem. You see this particular one, it's missing the cap. 
that can cause us some issues because road grime and, and corrosives can get into that valve stem. So this is a snap-in valve, so it's a rubber valve stem, brass and rubber. Not as critical as some of the clamp-in valve stems with the aluminum nut and aluminum stem. Um, these are real susceptible to road salts and road corrosion, so you want to make sure and inspect these very closely as, as going forward. Especially on this type if it is missing a cap, so that corrosion gets in there and it, it will degrade that aluminum a lot faster than it will the um, brass valve core. So you want to make sure and inspect that very closely. So what we need to do is just set it up for this particular vehicle. It's all make, model, and year driven. So we go into Chevrolet, we go into our, our Malibu, which is our model for this year, and 2013, which we know it's a 13 because of the VIN number. Now I activate that, the tool tells you what to do next. What I need to do is I need to go down, hold the tool at the tire and hit our center test button. And what we're going to do here is we're going to activate that sensor to make sure that it's working correctly. As you can see here, it gives us the pressure that that sensor is broadcasting out to the computer on this vehicle, which is 40 PSI. We know that that's wrong because of the door placard in there was 35. So we do know we have a pressure issue here, but we need to continue our test to figure out what else might be wrong with this vehicle. You see, after we get that pressure, we know the sensor is broadcasting, so the tool will automatically move around to the next tire that we need to do, which is our right front tire. Now, Steve, this is the tire that the driver information panel says is the bad one, right? Yes, it is. So let's just confirm or deny that. What can happen with some of these vehicles, if this was taken into a shop and the tires were rotated and it never was relearned, that driver information panel could be giving us false information. But as you see by this tool, it verifies that the driver information panel at this point was correct. So. All right, well, let's get the other two done. Okay, and then we can go ahead and do our relearn and we can get this car out of here. Well, Steve, show us how to do the audit report. Great. As you can see, we've collected all the data from the sensors here on the tool, but we need a way to store that collected and be able to print it out to use as a sales tool for our customers to show them that they've got TPMS issues. Our Tech 500 communicates wirelessly with a laptop computer or a desktop computer. It comes with everything you need to communicate wirelessly with that. All we need to do is go into our audit reports, and I set the tool up and I hit send, and as you can see, our audit reports will pop right up there on the screen as to the date we did them. We've even got a feature over here where we can print this information out, or you can actually save it to your computer in, into a file. All the information that we've collected out of these sensors shows up on this audit report. So we can use it as a sales tool or as a limit your liability tool if we do an audit report after the relearn. So once again, it's very important to do the audit report before we touch anything, and that's the whole point. Well, now what we have to do is we have to relearn this vehicle to make sure that the car knows that all the sensors are in the correct location. As we can see by the dash, we've corrected our pressures, so now we have to do the relearn on this. This particular vehicle is what's called a stationary relearn, which means I have to put the car into relearn mode and then activate the sensors so that the car can recognize them as I activate them going around. Right. So let me walk you through the steps on this particular vehicle. There's no need to, to panic about the relearn steps because they are all right on board on the tool. It'll walk you through every step. So in this particular Malibu, I go to where I get the picture of the tires on the dash, and then I hold the set clear button on the end of the turn signal lever, and then it asks me if I want to relearn the tires, and I arrow up to yes, and I press that button again. And as you can hear, the horn honks at me and tells me now I'm ready to do relearn, and my tool at the same time has told me to go to the left front. And we're gonna go around and do it just exactly like we did on the test before you touch. So Steve, step six is really about documentation, right? That's correct. We used our audit report from our test before you touch as a sales tool to help us sell the TPMS job to the customer. The audit report after we do the relearn is more to limit our liability. With this report in our records, we know that, that when that vehicle left this shop, everything was correct. So if the customer does come back with another TPMS issue, we know that it's not an existing issue or something that we missed going down the road. We've got all our data here, the lights off on the vehicle, and so now we're ready to go. All right. Now this Chevrolet is just a stationary style relearn, it's just one type of relearn. We do have OBD2 connectivity on a lot of vehicles and we're adding more and more all the time. What that gives us is the ability to actually check and clear diagnostic trouble codes as well. So we're, we're leaning towards being able to do OBD2 connectivity through all the vehicles going forward. So. so there you have it, the six steps to successful TPMS programming. This is a great way to make this a profit center for your business. Our commercial customers are wondering if there's any differences in checking the 12-volt charging systems on our hybrid vehicles. Hybrid electric vehicles actually have two batteries, a high-voltage traction battery 
and the 12 volt auxiliary battery, you know, to run the computers and the lighting and the vehicle's electrical system. And checking that 12 volt auxiliary battery and charging system is a little bit different on a hybrid. Now to begin with, all of these vehicles that have non-hybrid versions out there too, well the battery is located up in the engine compartment just like normal. So the first step is to locate the 12 volt battery. In the case of the Prius, it's back in the trunk. But we want to start underneath the hood, and in this case, at the jump post. Let's get started. The jump post is located either inside or near the main fuse cover. And in the case of this 2010 Prius, it's right here under this little red cover. First, connect the negative lead of a voltmeter to the engine block. Now connect the meter's positive lead to the jump post and turn the meter on to the 12 volt DC scale. And we should get 12.4, 12.6 volts, something like that. Now, if the reading is still below specifications, come on to the back of the vehicle and connect your meter directly to the battery terminals. And that way, we'll find out whether the problem is in the 12 volt battery itself, or maybe it's the cable in between the positive battery terminal and the inverter. The next step would be to start the vehicle. Now remember, a hybrid vehicle may start in the silent mode, like this one is right now. But we can see that the charging system is working. We should be at about 13.8 to 15.5 or so. Here we're at 14.9. So even though the engine is not running, we know that the DC to DC converter is actually charging the battery. Although the test is quick and direct, remember a problem in the charging system is most likely in the DC to DC converter or in the transaxle itself. So further scan tool diagnostics will be necessary to pinpoint exactly where the problem is. 